Hello everyone, my name is Satyam Shivaj and I am working as a legal intern with Lexus & Company and in this video we will discuss about compoundable and non-compoundable offences. Starting with the compoundable offences, these are the offences where the complainant enter, in, enter into a compromise and agrees to have the charge dropped against the accused. However, such a compromise should be a bona fide and not for any consideration to which the complainant is not been entitled to. According to Section 320 of the CRPC, which states that the compounding offences are less serious criminal offences and are of two different types, mentioned in the table of Section 320 of the CRPC, providing first, the court permission is it not is not required. These are the offences, compounding of which do not require prior permission of the court. Some of the examples are adultery, causing hurt, defamation or criminal trespass. Second being the court permission, where the court permission is required, these are the offences compounding of which requires prior permission of the court. Example is theft, criminal breach of trust, voluntary causing grievous hurt, assault on a woman with the intention to outrage her modesty, or dishonest misappropriation of property, amongst other. Now the application for compounding the offences shall be made before the same court before which the trial is proceeding. One and once an offence has been compounded, it shall have the same effect as if the accused has been acquitted of the charges. Now let's see the example of compoundable offences. Like uh, uttering words etc. with deliberate intent to wound the religious feeling of any person causing hurt, or a criminal or house trespass, or a criminal breach of contract of services, or printing or engraving matters knowing to be a defamatory, or there are some of the offences which although are compoundable and can be compounded only with the permission of the court. And these offences should be compounded before the trial begins. Also, where the accused has already been convicted and an appeal is pending, the permission of the court is required for compounding of such offences. The reason for seeking permission from the court is that these offences are grievous in nature and are bad example in the society. Now let's see the non-compoundable offences. The non-compoundable offences are offences where it cannot be compounded, meaning they can only be quashed. The reason for this is because the nature of the offences is so grave and criminal that the accused cannot be allowed to go scot free. Here in these type of cases, generally it is the state, that is the police, who, is the, who has filed the case and hence the question of the complaint entering into compromise does not arise. All those offences which are not mentioned in the list of Section 320 of CRPC are not compound, are non-compoundable offences. Under non-compoundable offence, a private party as well as the society both are affected by such offences. In non-compoundable offence, no compromise is allowed. Even the court does not have the authority and power to compound such offences. A full trial is held which ends with the acquittal or conviction of the offender based on the evidence provided. Now let's see the difference between compoundable and non-compoundable offences. The difference between compoundable and non-compoundable are provided under first being the nature of the crime. In compoundable offences, the nature of the offence is not serious, while in the non-compoundable offence, the nature of the offence is of a serious nature. Now the second being the withdrawal of the charges. In compoundable offence, charges made against the accused can be withdrawn, while in the non-compoundable offences, the charges made against the accused cannot be withdrawn. Third being the affected parties, in compoundable offence, it impacts only a private person, while in non-compoundable offence, it affects both a private person as well as the society at large. Now the next is compoundable. In compoundable offences, settlement can be done either with permission or without the permission of the court. While in the non-compoundable offences, the offences cannot be compounded and it can only be quashed after the trial. Now the next is filing of the case. In compoundable offences, cases are generally filed by the private person. While on the other hand, in non-compoundable offences, cases are generally being filed by the state. Now let's see some important judgment. 
quote in Thakkar versus AP Jalavari and another, it was said that if an acquittal is based on the compounding of an offence and the compounding is invalid under the law, the acquittable would be liable to seat set aside by the High Court in the exercise of its revisional powers. If any non-compoundable offence has been compounded against the law and the acquittal of the accused made is on based on the compromises, the High Court has a power to set aside such orders. Court in Narendra Singh versus State of Punjab held that all the principles are taken into consideration by the Supreme Court and several other judgments led by the regarding compromise in non-compoundable cases and laid down, the fine, uh, laid down the following guidelines regarding quashing of a criminal proceeding in non-compoundable offences by the High Court when invoking their inherent powers provided under Section 482 of the CRPC. However, in some cases the Supreme Court gave permission for compounding of the offences under Section 307 of the IPC, where the attempt of the murder is there and the case in the Mahesh Chandra versus State of Rajasthan. While in the Supreme Court in Ram Lal versus State of Jammu and Kashmir, by overruled its decision, held that an offence which law declares to be non-compoundable, even with the permission of the court, cannot be compoundable at all. Whereas in the case of B. S. Joshi versus State of Haryana, Supreme Court held that in a situation of proceeding on the basis of non-compoundable offences, like Section 498A and 406, the High Court could quash them under Section 482 of CRPC. Now let's see the last case of this video. Is the, in Gyan Singh versus State of Punjab, the Supreme Court upholding the decision of the B. S. Joshi versus State of Haryana and observed that the offences arising out of a family dispute of matrimony relating to dowry etc. in which wrong is basically private in nature and the parties have resolved their disputes, I could make quash the proceeding under section 482 of the code as there is a power which is different from the power of the criminal code to be compound the offences. That is all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.